You're watching a tutorial by Mommyish, now with epic voiceovers, presenting how to use styles to make your layouts epic. Like my voice. Hi, this is Leah from Mommyish, and today, as you just heard, I have a tutorial on how to use styles for making your layouts epic. Um, I hope you liked the intro. That's my friend Dan and he has an amazing voice, doesn't he? And I'm trying to convince him that he should be a voice actor. So if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone, you just let me know so I can send him to them because the kid has talent. So anyway, here we go. I'm starting off with a very simple layout. This is a template from Chrissy W at Two Peas in a Bucket. And this kit is a collab of mine and Pink Reptile Designs called Project Live, Laugh and Love, which is like an all year long sort of kit to use. So here we go. So here we have a layout um, using a template as I just said. So we're gonna start off with, um, I added a heart here. Um, which is just the shape, right? So, you know, we all have shapes. So what I do is I'm gonna like zoom in really close. Oh my goodness, it's so huge. <laughs> That's what she said, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's a heart. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through my styles and obviously, you know, I have tons, but I'm gonna use a very specific style for you guys. Um, this is one of the ombre styles that I have at uh, Sugar Hill and as soon as I find them so here we are there's three of them and see when I add the effect it gives it that kind of you know it's puffy it's awesome so I have three different ones they're three sizes there's a smaller one I think I kind of like that one the smaller one on it so once I've added a style to the shape I'm just going to simplify the layer so here in Photoshop, it's rasterized layer style. So bam, it's done. And then I would just add a shadow to it, right? So we turned it from a regular little heart to something with a little more depth, like my, my very own custom element. The second thing I have is my title. This is using the font Lobster because it's popular right now. It's like the font that all the cool kids are using and I wanna be a cool kid when I grow up. So I'm using that font. And I think what I'm going to use with this one is my ghost styles, which is going to make it look like acrylic, clear acrylic. So as you see, I just apply the style to the text and I'm going to look at a few different ones to kind of figure out which one I want. And I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm liking the first one the best. What I'm going to do is... I want it to be, I don't want the edges to quite be as big as they are. You see how they are like that? Well, that's because the text that I'm using here is, is pretty small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size like that. And I'm liking the way the edges look now at that size. All right, so I'm going to apply that. I'm going to change it so it's the style that doesn't have the shadow on it. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to rasterize this layer style. And now I'm going to resize it. So then I'm going to scale it down again. So it maintains the, um, the same size, you know, like the percentage of how much I wanted there on the edges. Apply. And see? So it's not as big. Um, now some of you know that if you add a drop shadow to a transparent element, you get like a weird sort of odd dark kind of thing going on. I'm not really a fan of it personally. I know some people have styles that are for transparent elements to look a little softer, but there's a trick. Okay. So get ready for this. There is a trick. What you're going to do, we're going to go back. I'm going to step back and I should have done this at the beginning, but we're, you're, you're going to see, um, after we, we're going to duplicate this layer whenever I had added the, the style to it, right? So there it is. Now I'm going to take the layer, did I duplicate it? doesn't look like it duplicated. I was being mean. Duplicate. There we are. So what I'm going to do with the layer underneath it 
is I'm going to keep the fill at zero, but I'm going to turn off the style. Then apparently I need to turn the fill back to zero again. All right, I'm going to link these two layers together. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize the layer style on the top one. I'm going to link them together. I'm going to resize. Now, what we're going to do, like I said, did before, is scaling down the title to be where I want it. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take the layer underneath. When you double click, you're going to add your drop shadow. Um, I like to use linear burn. This is for if you're using Photoshop. I'm not quite sure how this works in Elements. I'm so sorry that I'm not more knowledgeable about that. Um, I need to brush up on Elements. I don't really use it at all. So anyway, you just kind of decide how you want it to look, the size, obviously the opacity, turn it down a bit. And there we go. So all using styles, just from regular old text, I have my own acrylic title with a cool drop shadow. See, that's what it looks like without. So it doesn't add the darkness underneath. See? Isn't that snazzy? I'm a fan. All right. The next thing we're going to do with styles to make this more our own is I'm going to take the stitching layer that Chrissy has, this grid. I'm going to go ahead and colorize it to be a different color. So I'm going to go to color overlay. Another way you can do it, actually, if you, I'm going to try to make it more universally acceptable. I'm going to clip the layer to um, a layer above the stitching grid. Then I'm going to fill it in with the color that I want the stitching to be. Um, I'm taking a yellow from the palette, I'm going to lighten it up. So I want it to be like a yellow stitching just for the sake of what we're doing. And see when I fill it in, how it, you know, it's maintained that. So I'm going to merge those two layers together. And then I'm going to add a stitching style to it. I have several different stitching um, styles available at Sugar Hill. And I'm going to utilize one of my latest ones. So that adds like a very soft stitching bevel. I have a different one. I'm sorry that I have to scroll through so many styles to get to the ones that I want to show you. Um, there's just so many. There's, ooh, I like that one. We're using that one. So there it is. So I've made the stitching from the white that she had to a yellow. I really like it. I think it's kind of cute. Um, if you wanted to get really nitty gritty about it, I also have styles to create the, the stitching holes. So basically, it would probably take you forever, but, you know, depending on how much time you have, you just create a layer underneath it. You would get a brush, which some of my uh, style sets also include um, brushes for stitching holes. And But you can use a circle. I mean, nothing wrong with the circle, right? And it's easier for me to find. Uh, so you'd want to try to find it, make it be, you know, an appropriate size. And usually I have a stitching hole style. So let's find where I had this, the stitching it was here. Here's the hole style and apply it to that layer. And then what I'll do, I'm going to change this color to like black and just do, do, do like that. So then it would look like it was, you know, See how it does. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's how you can use styles to really create cool effects. This is just a very tiny example of, of how it works. I mean, there's so, 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 so much you can do with styles. Um, whether it's making your own titles to maybe creating some elements that you want that might not be included in the kit. Um, it's really so easy to do. For example, if I wanted to create my own flower quickly to match the kit, I would take a flower shape, create the shape, make it in the color that I wanted it to be in. Let's go with pink. Hot pink is my favorite color. And then um, I'm going to use one of my new um, puppy styles on it. Not my conversation heart. I'm trying to find the right style. <laughs> uh, and I could just 
use each different one trying to find this the style that I really want here they are here's my little puppy styles again a lot of times what happens is it looks different on smaller um, items so what you would just do is increase it make it bigger until you have the size that you want of the bevel rasterize it the layer style then resize it from that and there you have it I would have my own little star or not star but flower to add as part of the um, I think I want to add it underneath the other flower I'll show you really quickly I'm going to put it at a different angle maybe make it a little bit bigger like that have my flower add a drop shadow and just have a little bit more but I'm um, deleting that so there you go I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial it's a little longer than my normal tutorials but um, I just I really feel that a lot of scrappers don't realize how much you can do with styles whether it's in elements or Photoshop um, creative suites there's so much you can do to really create a fantastic and unique look to your layout it's so easy click of a button literally any color you want I mean it's fantastic so anyway I hope you guys have a fantastic day a fantastic weekend and uh, stay warm bye bye and that ladies is how it's done subscribe to keep up to date with the latest tutorials featuring me also reading the dictionary for your listening pleasure